Hello, my name is David Berrios. I'm from the Space Weather Center located at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. This video is a summary of the events associated with the two X-Class flares that occurred on March 7, 2012. Solar flares represent one type of solar eruptive event, appearing as a sudden brightening on the sun's surface. You can see them in the beautiful high spatial and temporal atmospheric imaging assembly images obtained from the NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory mission. For a powerful solar flare event, such as the two X-class ones here, the radiation energy is on the order of 10 to the 25th joules. Such flares radiate throughout the electromagnetic spectrum from gamma rays to X-rays through visible light to kilometer-long radio waves. Within minutes of the flares, radio blackout can occur as solar flares can modify the composition and structure of the sunlit side ionosphere, producing sudden ionospheric disturbances, particularly with the energetic X-class flares. Radio communication can be affected as the ionosphere serves as the medium through which the signals propagate. Two X-class flares erupted within one hour of each other from the active region 1429 on March 7, 2012. The first one is the X5.4 class flare which peaked at 0024 UT on March 7, and the second one is the X1.3 class flare which peaked at 0114 UT on March 7 as well. Associated with the two flares were two fast and wide coronal mass ejections with the first one at a speed of almost 5 million miles per hour, a bit off to the east side of the sun, and the second one more earth-directed with a speed of 4 million miles per hour. Prior to this, the region had already produced an X1.1 class flare and numerous M class flares. On the scale of flare intensity classification, X stands for extreme and M stands for moderate. The combination of the two intense X-class flares and the accompanying coronal mass ejections led to enhancement of energetic particle radiation across a broad interplanetary space. About 30 minutes after the second flare, the X1.3, near Earth, the greater than 100 MeV proton flux at GOES started to increase, along with other energy channels. Enhanced radiation level was detected by SOHO, ACE, Stereo B, and GOES spacecraft. It is expected to affect all the spacecraft between the Sun and Earth and Mars, any object within the broad path of the coronal mass ejections. The radiation associated with the greater than 10 MeV protons reached a level of S3 on a scale from S1 to S5, with its maximum occurring at 11.15 Zulu time on March 8. This makes the solar energetic particle event the largest since October 29, 2003, slightly outranking the strong January 23, 2012 SCP event. The high dose of radiation has lasted more than two days, remaining elevated. Using coronagraph images on board NASA spacecraft STEREO, which stands for Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory, and NASA ESA joint mission SOHO, which stands for Solar Heliospheric Observatory, Combined with the information provided by the Solar Dynamics Observatory, the kinetic properties of the CME, or coronal mass ejection, were determined and used as input for our physics-based global-scale heliosphere model of coronal mass ejections. The model results provide forecast information of arrival time of the coronal mass ejections at various spacecraft and planet locations. There was about a 4-hour error in arrival time at Earth and a 1.5-hour error in arrival time at Stereo B, which is remarkably good. The time between the start of the first coronal mass ejection and the shock arrival at Earth is about 34.5 hours. So far, the coronal mass ejections have resulted in a strong geomagnetic storm with Kp equals 7. The interaction of the coronal mass ejections with Earth has played out in a rather interesting fashion. Started as a minor geomagnetic storm with Kp equals 5, but revealed its potency about 20 hours after its arrival with Kp equals 7 at the time of the report, possibly due to the fact that the two coronal mass ejections occurred in quick succession. 
The strong geomagnetic storm could affect power grids, GPS, and spacecraft via surface charging. All of the data in this video is accessible from our integrated space weather analysis system, located at iswa.gsfc.nasa.gov. Thank you for watching, and this has been a summary report from the Space Weather Center located at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. Thank you.